it is always hard to balance uh, per perfect infection control with um, quality of life and well-being and autonomy and choice and things like that. And it is always a balance. There is no perfect scenario. There is no risk-free scenario. We, anybody who's worked in long-term care or in elder care knows that that is true. Um, but I think that we need to find the best way to create that balance. I think the comment I made on a recent, a recent webinar was that we tend to throw, a lot, throw around a lot of terms like person-centered care, or person-directed care, or individualized care. And I think that this COVID pandemic is challenging us to really examine that uh, at a much higher level than we've ever had to before. Because often we still have used that terminology, but we haven't really gone as deeply as we need to. And um, so I do think that we need to understand better than we've understood them, people better than we've understood them. We need to use critical thinking around people's distress more than we ever have before. We need to be especially careful of doing the things that people fall back on, um, like physical or chemical restraints, which are, are abundantly dangerous in this situation for a lot of reasons. If you use precautions, there's no reason why the outdoors would be a bad place to go. And um, uh, to me, it's like Karen Stobie told a story about a, a courtyard, a beautiful courtyard that was closed to the residents because uh, someone had fallen there once and gotten hurt. And she said, well, geez, has anyone ever fallen indoors and gotten hurt? Do you say they can't be indoors anymore? And so once again, we're, we're, putting, we're not thinking critically about what the risks are. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind, too, because this is such a stressful time for all of us, is what is our own body language showing? Mm -hmm. uh, because people will react to our body language. If we're sounding stressed, if we're looking stressed, um, that can compound the anxiety people feel. So it's also a good time to look inward and to really use all those best communication techniques, you know, getting down to the person's level, speaking clearly, always asking permission before entering a space or touching the person or touching their belongings, checking in through tasks, asking permission, okay, can we do, we'll do this now, and explaining all those little things. Um, by doing those, you can take away a lot of the free-floating anxiety because the problem is when we start thinking about things like infectious control, it puts us in more of a task mindset, and we tend mm -hmm. to forget those relational things that are so critically important when we interact with people. So the little things sometimes are the most important.